Hi guys, this is Pierre. How you going? Um, today I'm about to bottle my Dutch lager slash ale. An extract I bought from a local brew shop. The brew shop was uh, selling it cheap and I saw it on the bench and I thought, oh, I'll grab that. It's um, not out of date yet, it's going out of date. So I thought I'd grab it and brew it up. So what I did, as you can see, my last brew video for Dutch lager, you'll see that I've brewed it up and I've explained to them it's, it's pretty much out of date. And I thought maybe an extract doesn't go out of date. Extracts are normally pretty good when you, they're a month or so out of date, so it should have been right. Uh, the yeast I had to check, which I didn't, which is a problem I made. I should have uh, activated my yeast first to make sure it is actually alive, but I didn't do that. So I brewed my brew, chucked the yeast in, or pitched my yeast, as you would say it, and then uh, left it. So after about three days, the yeast didn't activate. It didn't do anything. It just sat there in the bottom of the um, fermenter and did nothing. So luckily a little, like a, I've got a fermentosaurus with a little catch bowl on the bottom, so the catch bowl caught most of the old yeast, which is great, because I've just unscrewed it, chucked it away, and re-pitched yeast again, which is an ale yeast, which wasn't supposed to go into this lager that I was doing. So I put the ale yeast in, which worked. It fermented, and now it's finished. Now for the result. So basically, I'm gonna bottle it, but before I bottle it, I'm going to taste it to make sure it isn't off. It has no bacteria growing on the surface. It smells a bit funky, so I'm a bit worried about that, and I'll let you know. Also, while it was fermenting, I had a few dramas. Basically, the yeast didn't take, so I had to put a new ale yeast in, which kind of changes the flavour of the whole brew, and it changes the time for it to brew as well, so it's basically ready. Um, the other one is, I had a grandson who comes over and visits, visits us every now and again, you know, he's, he's a good little boy. Must have, while I was at work, he must have went into my room, grabbed my airlock, pulled it out, went for walkies and showed people, ah, and put it back upside down. I didn't know about it for a day or so. Went back, saw it upside down and went, what is going on? I'm hoping that the exposure isn't bad enough for it to be a problem. It was still fermenting at the time. So hopefully it was just pushing the air out rather than letting any bad air in. We'll find out soon. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean all my bottles of Mangrove Jack's um, cleaning detergent. So it's cold water stuff. It's uh, just an clean basically. Uh, put five liters in the sink, chuck this in, use a little scoop for my two, two tablespoons for every five liters. So pour it in there and then I'll uh, give all my bottles a clean and then I'll sanitize them and uh, then I'll be ready for bottling. So guys, you've seen this before. I'll get my, uh, my bottles, give them a good clean in OxyClean, which is just in the sink here. Um, give it a scrub out with the bottle brush that I keep. And then I'll give it a rinse in uh, sanitizer, put the lids back on, which are in the sink here as well. So I'm giving them a good clean in Oxy, OxyClean as well. And once I've sanitized them, I'll put the lids back on so they stay sanitized internally. Uh, until I'm ready to actually put my brew into it. Sorry, I just saw something in there just made me laugh. Um, so once uh, once that's done, then we go that way. So I'm gonna clean the bottles, even though I haven't tasted the brew yet. The brew has uh, 23 litres. I've calculated uh, 23 litres. I'll probably get about, what, 730 mil in each bottle. There's yeah, 740 mil bottle. Um, 730, if I'm squeeze a little bit of air out, that normally, that's normally what I do. Um, that'll give me 31 bottles, but I have in the bottom of the uh, fermenter a whole bunch of troop, which is you know, your yeast and a couple of sediments and things like that. I've got to go through that a little bit. I've got to empty it out a little bit, so I might lose about a litre, maybe a litre and a half of um, fluids, basically, or beer, before I get to bottle them. So I've given myself around about 20, 27, 28 bottles which I reckon would be pretty close. If I have any left over, it doesn't matter. 28 bottles is enough for me anyway, so I'll work that out. All right, guys, I'm getting close to the end of uh, cleaning all my bottles out. Uh, some of these had some uh, dregs at the bottom of them, so I had to brush them out a little bit, ah, nice and clean. So you gotta do that. You gotta make sure that they're spotless. I mean, if you leave dregs in there, as long as you get the chunky bits out, it really doesn't hurt them. Um, basically, you can put your sanitizer on there. The sanitizer will clean Sorry, we'll sanitize the bottles and make them um, you know, safe to drink out of and work with. Uh, as long as you sanitize them, as long as there's no chunks in it, you're pretty safe. So yeah, we won't be long. 
So what I'm going to do now is um, basically the lids are all on my bottles, they're all ready to go to be bottled. There's 28 bottles all clean and sanitised. This is a sanitised solution now. I'm going to just place my little, let me try this out. In the Fermentosaurus they have these little things which is a uh, um, just something to let the truth get out, or basically uh, whatever you want to get out really. Um, so what they do is it screws in where the little catch bowl goes, and uh, you pop a hose on the end, which is what I'm doing now. And on the hose, I'll basically place in a cup of hot water, just to soften it, because it's a bit smaller than what I want to attach it to. So I just heat it up in the hot water, grab my little Call it a funnel, I suppose. Now it's nice and soft. I should be able to spread that over that end real easily, just like so. Oh, it is nice and soft. They get on there nicely, so it can't fall off or come off at all, unless I'm really trying to get it off. That's on. On the other end, I'm going to put a bottle wand, so I'll soften that as well. That's the base, so that's a, I mean, that's the most out of whack end. So I'll go that one. This one's a bit more straight, so I'll use this end for the hose. Heat that up which doesn't take long of course, it's boiling hot water basically. Softens it up so that it's now... Oh, that's nice and soft. Get my hands, cool it down before I get it on. <laughs> there we go, I've got it over. Just need to slide it a bit more so it makes it more reliable. See how this can be very frustrating for some. It's on. That's all we need. So now I have my hose, my siphon hose for a bottle wand, so I can actually pop it into the thing that comes out of the Fermentosaurus. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and grab the Fermentosaurus. We'll be back. This is our big fella. I'll pop it on the table. That's up there, ready to go. So as you can see, I've got this Fermentosaurus sitting up here. I've got this little fella here, which reminds me. I'll just get this, I'll actually put some uh, sanitizer in this little bottle here so I can actually clean up under here. Because it's been out in the open air for a little while. Just make sure the rubber seals get a little bit of contact. Yep, looks good. Just give it a bit more of a quick squirt. There we go. So I'll whack this beauty up here, which will be a... Uh, you have to twist it at the same time, because I should have basically contacted that, but then you really do. As long as it gets a good contact, it shouldn't leak like that, then we're right. So what happens now is, I'll give that a squirt because it was on the ground, because I want to basically put the excess trube here, into here until it starts running clear. And that's where I'm going to lose a bit of fluid. This is a one litre cup, so I'll have to plan this so I don't get too much mess. So the plan is, I'm going to chuck it in this little pot here. Basically just do it until it runs clear and we should be right. So, here we go. So just wait for a sec, I'll move the camera so you can actually see what I'm doing and we'll be right. So guys, you can see that we've got our valve. I'll take the uh, little airlock off at the top. You can't see me do that, but I've taken that airlock off, which probably didn't do much anyway in the year. In, in, the, year. in, the, in the fermenting time. So now I'm going to crack the valve which should not leak, I'm hoping it doesn't. That's cracked. So at the moment there's nothing coming out. That's a worry because I'm, pick, I'm worried that this is gonna be clogging it up. We'll soon find out when I crack this. Let's see if it comes out. Chunkies are coming out, hopefully, hopefully it'll push it through the tube. 
Well, that's a bit of a worry. This may not work. If I pressurised it, it would work. I need a pressure cap though, which I don't have. So that's a, it's a worry. I'm gonna to have to go with it for the wand. I'm sorry, but I can't get it out. We'll close that valve off. Unscrew this little beauty. Probably make a little bit of a mess. Okay guys, just as you saw a few minutes ago, the spout at the bottom clogged up with um, true. Couldn't do it, it was just clogging up. I couldn't do it, so. Basically going the old way, just using the um, siphon. I'm going to siphon it into the bottles and go from there. Now I've had a problem and I'm finding solutions for it. Right now, as you can see, I've taped my siphon onto the fermentosaurus. I don't know if it's gonna work, but it looks like it's gonna work, it's pretty solid. It's not gonna hit the bottom now and bloody give me no <laughs> siphoning ability. So now, I should be able to fill my bottles properly. All right, we now I'll be able to do this one-handed. Get the siphon going, just like that. We now have full siphon. Now I can do my bottle. See, nice and clear. Why didn't that happen? This is probably gonna be okay. I'll use it anyway. And off we go, filling up our hoses. So each bottle will fill up to nearly near the top and I'll just stop it just before it reaches there, pop that in there and I'll get a lid and in the meantime I'll actually squeeze the air out of the bottle until it gets to the top of the bottle and then put the lid on. That way no oxygen is in there. So with my bottles at the bottom there there's a little uh, like little ledges that you want to go into. So in there you'll see where, the tr where I put the actual brew in. So when I put it in, I'll actually put it in that corner so I don't get a lot of air going in, and it will just fill up nice and neatly in that aspect and be pretty good. So I shouldn't shake it out, but anyway, let's fill them. Now, I probably should taste it. I'll fill this bottle up and I'll give it a quick taste test and check the alcohol volume as well. Yeah, I've grabbed myself a, a new little glass, uh, what do you call it, a gravity reader. So I'll just fill this little thing up here, just to get some enough in there to test. Bring it too close to the top, we'll see how that looks. Drop this little beauty in there, see what it comes up with. There we go, so we've got, what have we got? bubbles in there. So it's down, oh it's actually 1010. Okay. One, 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 zero, 10. One, 10 in there. Now, a taste test. Like I said, I'm not, I'm worried it wasn't going to be good, so here we go. Nothing to worry about. It tastes good. 
It tastes very good. Very happy with that one. It's a very nice brew. Okay, lucky. <laughs> Here we go. Here I thought it was gonna be a bad brew. Dutch lager, eh? Pretty hearty stuff. Guys, to summarise the day, I basically I, I put a grab of beer from my keg. It's a it's one I did. Uh, it's an all grain one that actually I did probably uh, two months ago. It's still coming out beautiful, nice and clear, nice flavour, good bubbles, good you know, what do you call it? carbonation. <laughs> it's a nice beer. Cheers. <sighs> Very nice. What I'm doing to summarise today is basically let you know that I did a bottling of a Dutch lager, which turned out to be a Dutch ale, uh, basically because the Dutch lager yeast, or the yeast that they supplied, was dead. And I didn't test it, so what do you do? Uh, so I repitched it with ale yeast, which seemed to work really well. Um, it fermented, it finished fermenting, it's ready to go. I did have some dramas during the fermentation period, and uh, also some of the smells coming out of it was a bit worrying. So. I've now bottled them, so we're going to wait a couple of weeks. You'll see in this video the taste test after a couple of weeks, so hang around and I'll let you know what it tastes like. Thanks for watching. Hi guys, how are you? Good to see you back. Here are two brews I did. This one's I kegged just a couple of weeks ago, let it age a bit. I force carbonated it, so I get a bit of a uh, pre-carbonate. So I wanted to try it today, and I want to get some carbonation in it, so I force carbonated it. Uh, let it cool a bit. It's still a bit cloudy, as you can see. It's my all grain, uh, because I force carbonated I had to tip the keg over. And as, as I tip the keg over, of course, all the some of the little bit leftover dregs at the bottom mix in with the beer. So after about a week, that'll all settle down and become nice and clear again but you can still drink it. I'm gonna try it. This is my Dutch lager I did just recently. It, uh, a little bit worried about it. It tasted good when I bottled it. I wanna know now how it's gonna taste after uh, aging. It's been about two weeks now. I just wanna try it. Um, if I age it for longer, it might taste better, but I just wanna see what it's about. See if it doesn't taste like vinegar, which is a worry, and see how carbonated it is. Let's see how we go. It's not bad. Did hiss a bit. Got a bit of carbonation happening, bubbling up in the bottle there. We'll pour it in a glass and see how it pours. See if it carbonates nice. Yeah, it's not bad. Looking pretty good. We'll just put a bit of that in. So there's our Dutch lager. Looking pretty good. Nice little head retention. I reckon it's alright. We'll now do a smell test on the all grain, which 
Oh, absolutely beautiful. Floral. Oh, you can smell those galaxy hops and the cascade. Oh, it's really nice. Uh, looking forward to tasting this one. You ready? Cheers. Oh, that is a beautiful beer. Uh, can't, can't say anything better than that. That tastes really nice, good bitterness in it, uh, which would have come from the hops, of course. Uh, needs a bit more carbonation, it's not too bad though. Uh, I might just let it sit for another week or so in the fridge to let it all settle, retaste it again, see how I like it. I'm not gonna do it on camera again, that's just silly. But uh, my all grain came out beautiful, I could drink this all day. Mmm, that smell is absolutely oh, awesome. It is a really nice smell. Anyway, let's try our uh, Dutch lager, which as you can remember in the brew video that I did with the Dutch lager brew, I had a lot of trouble, a lot of, um, <laughs> a lot of angst. Yeah, it, it, to put it mildly. Anyway, as you can see, the head's gone down. There's not much of a webbing going on, so it's not an awesome brew. This one here has a nice little webbing going on. Uh, someone said to me on YouTube that if I clean all the, uh, lubricate all the rubbers and uh, the seals with uh, Vaseline, will that stop it from bubbling up and, and give, give me a good head? Nah. Seems to be quite good for me. Oh, you know, of course it's not carbonated properly, so it'll lose its head a little bit quicker. This one lost it really quick, and that's just straight out of a pack uh, and a, a, an extract that I put into a bottle. So here we go. Can you smell it? Doesn't smell good. Yeah, it doesn't smell good at all. Yeah, I'm worried now. Doesn't taste bad. Just doesn't taste it. It hasn't got an appealing smell to it. I'll try it. Oh, no, no, it's good. It's good. It just tastes like a, a, a standard lager. There's no, no real hoppy flavour. It's a little bit bitter. Not much. It's not bad. Um, I'm okay with that. Um, I can handle that, I think. Uh, should be, uh, yeah, yeah, great. I actually thought that would come out bad, but it's not bad at all. Hmm. I wish I could share it with you. That is a good beer. It's not a beer I drink every single day of the week, so it's probably gonna sit around in bottles for a while. Uh, probably keep that for the summer if it, if it stays. This one though, it is a nice, it's everything I want it. Oh, that is a good smell. So, oh, geez, I wish it had smell of vision. You'd love this, it's really nice. Anyway, enjoy your night, or day, whatever you have. I'm gonna brew some more. I have a couple more videos coming up. Uh, and I'm going to try a stout with coffee in it. I went onto a uh, Facebook brew site uh, and talked to a few, well, you know, spoke to a few blokes, and they suggested a few suggestions for me for making a coffee stout, which is something I'm I really want to do. So I'm going to do that now because we're in midwinter. It's probably a really good time for it now. It'll ferment. My my coffee stout will ferment at about 16 to 18 degrees, uh, and I'll keep it. I'll keep it until it's ready to drink. Yeah, it could be a month, two months. We'll see how we go. So cheers. Have yourself a good one.